Hey everybody, it's Carly at Let's Bead. Welcome to our Sunday night Facebook Live. Actually, it's Monday, <laughs> but Mother Nature um, was causing havoc with the wind and I wasn't able to go live last night as planned, so I'm here tonight instead. Thanks for your flexibility. Um, so I'm just getting my iPad set up where I can see comments, if you guys comment. All right, and so um, if you're here, say hello. Um, love to know who's here. So I'm just going to start talking about the materials that I've got um, in front of me. So I have these African trade beads that you can get at Let's Bead. And I have these black, they're called horn beads, made out of horn. So, and they're really lightweight, so I thought they would be fun to use in the project. And I'm using some black leather. The leather is uh, one millimeter. Uh, the one and a half was a little bit too, um, too thick. I also had the, the two millimeter, or I'm sorry, the, the one and a half. This is the one and a half. This is the one... It was too thick, so you always want to, you know, double check with the size of the bead holes that you're working with. And I also have some Ceylon, and I have regular and I have heavy, both in black. So we're going to give that a try. I have some hypo cement just for when I do the, the crimp ends um, at the end. I have some little brass colored spacers that I might work in and then I have some 18 gauge six millimeter antique brass jump rings to use to connect to the uh, barrel crimps and then I have one closed antique brass jump ring and that one is 18 gauge eight millimeter and that's to use to connect the lobster to um, and then I have a pendant. Um, this is the pendant I'm using. It's like a, it looks like a lizard or um, an alligator maybe, I guess. Some sort of um, reptile. And then his tail is kind of part of the loop. So I thought that was cool. Um, we don't have any more of these, but we do have a lot, a nice selection of you know, these types of pendants. So you could easily do the same technique, just pick a different pendant and pick a different color um, African strand to match your pendant. Obviously this doesn't go so nicely, but I just wanted to <clears throat> uh, show you an example of others that you could use. So lots of choices. And then I also have just a pair of scissors and I have this um, I'm going to use for making the knot. So, um, and I just want to see if my comments, I can't see the comments. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. And now there's two ways that you can do this. Um, I also have a thread zap. Um, which we may need when we're uh, cutting the Ceylon. So I'm just going to slide this out of the way. And we have two ways that we can do this. Um, we can do it with a macrame board that um, we sell at the store. This is upside down. Um, but we have, they're by Beadsmith. And they've got these, you know, slits in them already. So you can just kind of tuck the thread, which is great. Um, a lot of times when I do stuff like this, I use my naughty do it all. Um, but I'm not going to use that today because probably most of you have the, um, other type of board. And so this is great. And it's, um, if you use pins in it, it's like self healing where it doesn't leave a lot of holes. So, um, so that's what I'm going to use today. And it's also nice because it's got like the measurements right on it. So you don't even need a tape measure. You can just look at your board and use that as your guide. Um, for visibility, 
I'm going to do it upside down just so that you can see more of the project and less of all the other text and stuff that's on the board. I just thought that might be easier. And if you're watching, if you could just say hello, just post a comment so I can tell if they're working because I have my full screen is coming up on my tablet and I can't tell if comments would appear or not. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, that'd be great. Um, so with the leather, I'm starting with um, 20 inches. And I'm starting a little bit bigger because, you know, this can definitely be a man's necklace. A woman could also wear it. Um, I'm making it for a man. Um, so I wanted, you know, a bigger size length in leather. And so the first thing I'm going to do, now you could do this a couple ways. You could just string the pendant on the leather and work that way. Or <clears throat> we could do kind of like a um, barrel knot where you line up the leather in the middle and you just wrap the cord and that's where I would use this peg. I would wrap the cord around you know maybe three times and then hold that pull the space holder out and then run it down back through and I know I'm my fingers are probably in your way so but I don't think I'm gonna like that for this I think I just want to string it straight on but I just wanted to show you a couple options um, of how you could start it okay so I don't need that That's the back side. All right. How's the lighting for you guys? Does it seem all right? If it does, give me some thumbs up. And if you did comment, um, I don't see it. So give me, give me some hearts if you commented and, and I'm not seeing, that's the only way I'll be able to know that you did. Um, Cause I'm not seeing comments, which is not helpful to me. All right, so I'm gonna string on, I was thinking maybe, let's do a couple of the, the horn beads first. And for those just joining, I'm using a one millimeter leather and I'm using some horn beads and some African trade beads. And we're going to be doing some macrame here in a little bit. I thought I'd put maybe just a couple of the black ones on just to separate from the green. Is everybody surviving the wind? <laughs> it seems to have died down here now. But it was uh, pretty windy the past couple days. My power was flickering last night, and I was hesitant to do the live because I thought, oh, if I get started and then it goes out. And then I didn't know how many of you were without power. So I thought it would just be better to wait until tonight. And I'm just getting this centered. Okay. All right, now I think I'll add on a 
couple of the green beads. Now another option to do this type of project is instead of using the leather, you could have used Ceylon as the core to macrame over and around the beads. I chose leather only just to make the finishing part a little bit easier for the video. Um, so <clears throat> I'm just going to trim this at an angle so that they thread better. Um, okay. So when we get to the end, if I didn't use the crimp beads and I was doing it on Ceylon, then I would have to do like a sliding, um, a sliding knot, uh, or a macrame slide. And I didn't want to do that for this video. So I wanted to keep it a little bit simpler. So I'm going to macrame over leather instead. And I apologize if you're commenting and I can't see them. Um, I will definitely go back through the video afterwards and answer any questions that you may have. It might be, usually I have my computer and I read the comments through that, but I'm using my tablet just to have more space on my desk because um, I'm doing this at home. And all right, so I'm happy with that. So, and I want to just make sure that I keep it centered. So I'm going to grab one of my clamps. <laughs> I'll show you this actually. This is, um, you can use so many things for like storage. So this is something that I bought at Wegmans a long time ago and it was meant to hold like, I don't know, different, um, like dips or relishes or whatever, but I thought it was great for, <laughs> for my studio. So um, I'm just gonna grab um, one of these clamps. So, but you, there's a lot of uses for different things and it looks pretty and festive. All right, so I bumped the camera. Let me get back back down to where I was. Make sure you can see. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to just put the clamp on one side so that the beads don't move and become uneven while I'm doing the macrame portion. Okay, and so now I'm going to just turn it sideways and I'm going to use the grooves in the mat board to slide the leather down between and then I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay, and then you can move it as you go. And I think I'm going to use the heavy, heavy Ceylon. And I'm going to do maybe maybe two feet. I have a little bit more. I probably have about three feet here. 
and I'm just going to run it underneath the cord, the leather cord. So who's excited about uh, coming in for the Tucson stuff being revealed this week? We are so excited. They have brought back so many amazing things. Um, from what I've seen so far, um, I would have to say this is one of my, one of the um, favorite reveals. <clears throat> one of the, um, I just love everything that they brought back. They did such an amazing job. So, so excited. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start macrame. And so I found the center and I ran my cord underneath. And now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm making a loop here and I'm running this over the top and pulling that cord out of the way. Then I'm taking this top cord, keeping my loop, I'm crossing over this cord and then I'm going underneath the leather and up through the loop that I made. And then I'm going to pull it tight. And I want to get this up close to the beads. You guys see that okay? I'm going to try to zoom. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now if I was, so that's um, half of a square knot. So then normally what you would do is you would now do the loop on the opposite side and bring this across the leather, then bring this over that cord, go underneath the leather and up through this loop. But I want to give the, uh, this a twisted effect. So instead of the, the knots being flat and straight, I want the the twist the knots to twist around the leather. So to get that effect, all you do is just keep making the loop on the same side. So you, instead of alternating sides, you're just going to do it again on this side. So I'm just going over the leather here, crossing over this piece, going underneath the leather, and then up through the loop. And I'm just pulling it tight. And then just keep repeating. Over, over. Under. And up through. And I did something wrong. So if you're uncertain of where you're at to fix it, just undo it just to be safe. Just pulling that up through. And I'm going to use my uh, thread zap just to raise the leather up a little bit so I can get my hands underneath it better. Um, or you could use a small spool of Ceylon or, you know, just something to raise it up. Just keep going. So because I'm using the heavier Ceylon, I'm not going to be able to go through the beads when I add more beads um, after the macrame stitches. So I'll have to use the thread zap to burn off those or you can cut and use glue if you don't have thread zap. sure it's not too close for you guys. And 
and already you can see it's starting to <clears throat> twist here which is what I was going for so I'm just going to keep stitching and I thought I would do you know maybe a inch or two of that um, so that you could see that look in the front and then <clears throat> I'll switch back to adding some more of the horn beads I bought the materials to make this necklace quite some time ago and I've had it in my head and I wanted to um, make it so I'm <laughs> glad to finally finally be getting to this oh speaking of which let me grab one thing I wanted to share with you okay so I get things in my head and I'm I'm I struggle so I'm gonna just take a break from this just for a second I struggle to be able to do it right when you know the thought comes um, so because I work a lot so a lot of times I'll draw things to help me <laughs> remember the things that I want to make and so I just have this this book that I got at uh, Barnes and Noble um, a couple of years ago and I use it just for my jewelry related stuff and so I draw things in it that I want to make and so like um, this is an idea of a crochet necklace that I want to do um, just to get it out of my head <laughs> so I don't forget to do it um, or this one is actually similar to kind of what we're doing today, but it has a different pendant, but um, same concept as far as doing the twisted macrame in the front, adding some beads, some more twisted macrame in the back. Um, a little bit different, but, but similar. And um, so if you guys have ideas and you, you know, don't get to do them right away, write them down, draw them, you know, they don't have, I'm, I'm not, an artist by any means so it doesn't matter what the drawing looks like as long as it helps you remember what you want to do um, this is an earring that I was just trying to come up with ways I have so much scrap leather you know shorter pieces of you know how can I use it so I just thought you know an earring but just wanted to share that with you in case it's helpful or gives you an idea of writing things down so you don't forget what you want to make all right, back to the project. I just wanted to mention that before I forgot. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's a comment. I can see him now. Elizabeth, hi. How are you? Thanks for joining. I'm doing the, normally I have my computer, but today I'm using my tablet so I have more space on my desk to read the comments, and I wasn't sure if they were working or not. So thank you for saying hello. Um, if you missed the materials that um, I'm using, if you joined late, um, I did list them in the beginning, but I'm happy to tell you again. I'm using uh, one millimeter leather, and I'm using heavy Ceylon to do the macrame part. And the green beads are African trade beads that I got at Let's Bead. And the black beads are horn beads that I got at Let's Bead. And this little alligator guy or lizard I got at Let's Bead as well. Um, I was saying they don't have any more of those, but they do have plenty of those styles of, of whoops, pendants um, that are really cool. Some of them are patinaed, some aren't, um, but you could definitely just pick a pendant, pick, you know, a strand of African beads that match your pendant and then go from there so 
All right, so this is twisting, so I'm just going to let it twist. And I'm going to do one more. You said that's a great idea. What are you referring to, Elizabeth? The, are you talking about the, the little idea book? I just have so much going on. If I don't write it down, I forget. And it, it bugs me because when I have an idea, I just want to do it. <laughs> and um, I'll stress about it thinking that I'll forget. So if I draw, draw it out, then I can relax and get to it when I can. I also write in it, like if I did, you know, I do uh, jewelry shows and I'll write ideas in it. Like if I did a show and something went well or something, maybe I tried something new, I'll, you know, share my feedback on what worked and what didn't so that when I do the next show, I can make changes. Yep, you need an idea book. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I hope you found it helpful. Okay, so. And I'm going to do just a little bit more because I really want you to be able to see the the twisting and the macrame in the, the front of the necklace. So I want a, you know, wide enough section. Did any of you guys lose power during the windstorm? do a couple more and then I'll pull it up closer so you can see. Oh, that's a great idea, Elizabeth. Yeah, bring one with you when you're in the store. Absolutely. Are you are you coming in this week, Elizabeth, to see all the new goodies? I can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait. So tomorrow the reveal is the unicorn beads. And if you um, aren't familiar with those, they're, they're a glass bead. And it's like a, a drop. They have a, a unique shape to them. And then when you string them, they kind of like interlock together. Um, they're very pretty. There's a lot you can do with them. Um, I've also heard them called puppy paws. Um, but their the correct name is unicorn beads. All right, so let me just show you. So can you see that? Okay, see how it's twisting. So I think I think I'll I think I'm gonna finish. You see how you can see the the twist. I think I'm gonna finish this one so it looks like a full section, and then I'll stop and add. Add beads. Oh, your power stayed on. Oh, that's great. I know there are some without without power. Oops, my thread got caught. Did I pull this the wrong way? It's twisting on me. There we go. And if I did, if I had used the smaller, uh, the regular size Ceylon instead of the heavy, I might have been able to get away with um, being able to slide it under the beads to string them on. I wasn't sure. But when you do use smaller, it takes 
a lot more stitches to <laughs> fill this area. So I didn't want to drive you guys crazy either with watching me do all that. All right, so I'm gonna pull that off. And right now, I'm just gonna slide on I'm going to do I'm gonna try a couple of the horn beads and I cut my leather at an angle um, to help feed it through the beads feed the beads on easier and I'm not worried about the long pieces you know I'll burn those off um, later yeah so I could do and I do have some larger horn beads too but I don't know I think I might like to keep it with the smaller ones I think I want the majority of this to be black. Um, I think I'll add in just a couple more green. So I think I'll add in just two more green. And some of the holes are different, you know, they're not always consistent. So if one doesn't work, I'm going to try another bead and that one went on easily. Oh, I was going to try those um, brass spacers. So let me try one of those, see what that looks like. And they're just these round round spacers that we have. Just I just wanted something to tie in the the metal to the um, antique brass uh, crimps that are going to be on the back. We'll see how this green bead lines up with it. If I think it's too small, then I might switch and put it in between some of the black. I'm not sure I like that. I'm going to try it in between two of the black ones. And if I don't like that, then I'm just not going to use the spacers at all. I just thought I would try them. Sometimes you just actually got to just put it on and look at it and then decide, you know, if you really like it or not. And I'll get two of the green ones on to give you the full look and then you can tell me what you think if I should keep them on or take them off all right so what do you think with the spacer or without I'm not totally sold. I think I'm going to take them off. I don't like it. <laughs> All right. But at least we tried, right? <laughs> Sometimes less is more. I'm 
All right. So I'm going to put those back on. We'll put on a couple green beads and then we'll do a little more macrame. Without, yeah, Elizabeth. I'm glad you agree. Okay. Just going to put in um, four more of the black ones. That hole is a little bit too small. There we go. small too. And then I think I'm just going to do the back half just all more macrame. What do you think? Or do you think more beads? <laughs> Hi, Diana. <laughs> oh, you crack me up. <laughs> How are you? How is Arizona? We miss you. <laughs> so... If you guys know Diana, she used to work at the store, and um, she met Beth and Terry out in Tucson when they went shopping, and so she was able to um, help pick out a lot of the beautiful goodies that they brought back. So I didn't get to see Diana in person, but it was nice to see her in pictures and know that she's doing well and getting settled out there. So, all right. So I think, yeah, I think I'm just going to do this back portion, just macrame, not add a ton of beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust where it's at on my board. These I'll keep out of the way and I'll cut them later. You just saw a lovely sunset. Oh, that sounds great. I, you, it sounds like things are going really well for you there, so I'm excited. Oh, Elizabeth is saying one or two more beads at the end of the macrame. Oh, at the very end in the back. Yep, I can do that. Good idea. Um, so we'll add a couple in the back. And then that'll take care of that. All right. So I'm just finding the center again. And then just sliding underneath the leather. And then I'm just going to still do that, the, um, where it, the square knots twist, just by doing the same step on the same side just like I did in the beginning. All right. And then I'm just gonna push that up snug to the bead. And just keep making my loops on the left. And then we'll have one side of this done. And 
And then, um, so I mentioned that tomorrow is the unicorn beads, and then on Wednesday is uh, Druzies that are being released. And they picked out and brought back more Druzies than we've ever had before. So if you're a fan of Druzies, you definitely want to come in and check it out. I saw several of them, and they are amazing. You just keep repeating doing the same stitch but once you get in the rhythm of it it does work up pretty quickly and you can see where the cord is starting to twist already And normally I would have the, the leather tighter in the board, but I don't want to do anything to the stitches that I already did on the beginning and the pendants kind of in the way. So Elizabeth is asking if the green beads are smooth and they are, they've got some like, grooves <clears throat> or lines on them a little bit so they're not perfectly smooth but mostly smooth if that makes any sense I don't know if can you see at that angle oh great Diana <laughs> I'm glad you like it I just wanted to do something fun, but I wanted to do something that, you know, a man or a woman could wear because I haven't done many things for men's necklaces or men's projects. So I wanted to give that a try. And I was telling everybody in the beginning, if you have a naughty do it all, you could do it on that as well. <clears throat> I do a lot with that. So one of these days I'll do a tutorial using the Naughty Do-It-All. All right. And it's twisting, coming along nicely here. And if you wanted it to look, you know, um, uh, more organic, you know, don't use the lobster claw like I'm going to use. Do the macrame slide on the back and add some beads. Um, yes, the macrame boards are at the shop. Um, I believe... We used to carry both sizes. I'm not sure if we have both sizes in stock or not, but we definitely would have the, the large one. I'm using a smaller one today just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I didn't want to use the, the big board, but I would recommend getting the big board because it's just better for necklaces and larger projects. And they are... Um, self-healing so when you use the t-pins in them to hold your macrame um, they don't leave giant gaps they close back up and they used we used to have some that had um, uh, cork, you know, it was like layers of cork, and those did not um, stay together as well over time. You know, when you're using the pins on them, the holes stay, they're not self healing, and so I definitely recommend this type of board better 
And I'm not sure if you saw in the beginning, Elizabeth, but these boards um, on the front, they've got like the ruler, um, so it's easy to measure. I just have it backwards so it's not as distracting when you're trying to see the thread and stuff in the video. But, and you can use, um, if you have 10% uh, off coupons from classes, you can definitely use those on the tools. Or if you have a $20 gift card from filling your customer rewards card, you can use that on the tools. Definitely a great thing to have. You can use this for braiding. All right. I also want to measure here soon and see how long one half is. So I've got my, if the board wasn't backwards, I could measure right on the board. But because, so this is um, five inches, just a little bit over. So for a man, you know, I think you definitely want to do like 19, I'll look up the average um, length for a man's necklace. Oh, Elizabeth, you just got the $20. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, you can use that on uh, on these tools. Um, I'll look up what they say the average measurement is for a man's necklace. And um, I'll post that just so you guys know. And I will uh, be sure to check that before I completely finish this one to know the length. So just like with the the earrings, you know, I'm just going to do one side so that you can get the idea. And then the other side, you would just do the same exact way. And I'll talk about how I do the ends, uh, but I won't finish the ends because I just want to check on the measurements before I do that. And then once I finish it, I'll put a I'll post a picture in the group so that you can see what it looks like all done. And if you guys make one, I'd love to see, do you guys have more of the pendants at the store or other animals in that same type of finish? Uh, yeah, Diana, um, I we don't have any more of the, the little lizards or alligators. And um, in the beginning, I was talking about that, that, you know, we have other things that are kind of that same style, same material. Um, and like I brought this example, um, you could use something like this. Just pick a different color African trade bead that would match better. Um, but you could definitely do, you know, kind of the same thing. And we have horn beads, we have one wooden beads. Um, you could make it however you want, but um, we do have more of the the pendants, just not the one I'm using today. And I apologize because this is this is a project that you know, um, I bought a while ago and I've been wanting to make it and um, I haven't had the time. So I was excited to finally get to this, but unfortunately, because it is later, we don't have that exact pendant anymore. Um, and this was uh, something that they had brought back from one of the shows and when we go to the shows we don't you know what we bring back we you may never see again so um that's why it's important to stop in on re reveal week like this week because you know you may see some unique things that you may not see back later so come in soon and often because every day something new will be be revealed All right, Let's see how much leather I got left here. Okay. So 
So, Elizabeth, you were talking about, um, oh, you're welcome, Diana. Uh, you were talking about the adding a couple beads at the end. And um, were you, did you mean, like, continue on with the macrame, do the beads at the end, and then go right into the clasp? I think that's maybe what you meant. And I'm just going to keep going here, but I just wanted to clarify with you. this back in. All right. Diana, are your fur babies adjusting well to your new your new home? I hope so. Elizabeth, yeah. Okay. Great. I will try that. I'm going to do some more of the macrame and I'll leave enough room for the beads. <laughs> they love all the birds outside and the new big window. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's great. Hey, Diana, how would you like to do me a favor? Would you, because I know you're quick, um, would you mind just Googling what's the average length for a man's necklace? That would just help me to know how far I should go before I add the beads here. And um, I just don't want to go too long. I should have looked that up before I started. I didn't think of it. I was thinking around 19, but I don't know if that's truly the average. So I just want to make sure that everybody here gets the correct information. Thanks. All right, so Diana's checking for us. <laughs> and this one seems like something's twisted, so I'm just going to undo it. Okay, try this again. Oh, 18 inches. Okay, so I was... I was an inch too big. So the average length for a man's necklace is 18 inches. Thanks, Diana. 20 is also acceptable. Okay, great. Perfect. So I think I'm just going to measure where I'm at. with the length of the leather and we'll see what I need to what I need to do all right so this is at 10 inches so I started with uh, 20 inches so that would be right this is half and so I'm gonna do just a little bit more macrame and then I'm gonna add the beads at the end like Elizabeth suggested and then I'll put the the uh, barrel crimps on and that'll have one side done so I'm gonna trim actually just a hair off this and it's probably always good to measure but <laughs> so when you cut yours measure <laughs> Uh, let's see, um, 20 is for a colorful length necklace, all depends on the man's preference. Yes, and it also depends on the size of the man. You know, some men have larger necks than others, um, so very true. All 
I'm making mine for Brad Pitt. He's got an average size necklace, so we should be good. <laughs> gonna finish the twist on this one so it doesn't look like a half a twist from the front and my thread is getting a little short Your brother would wear something like this, Elizabeth. Well, that's good to know. It's, uh, you know, I a woman could even wear this, you know, but I just wanted to do something that, you know, a man would wear also, so. Yeah, it is, it is, I like the style. I like, you know, of course I like the boho feel of things. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there, and then we'll put on some more beads, like Elizabeth suggested. So, let's see what we got here. Got to cut my strand a little bit. Yeah, Diana would wear it. I would too. Um, it looked cool layered with other necklaces. Yeah, absolutely. I should have cut that in an angle. There we go. Move those out of the way so I don't cut myself. All right, so I've got two of those on. And the layering of necklaces is totally the style right now, wearing multiple. Almost done with one half. This really didn't take long to make. Plus I was talking and Is that what you had in mind, Elizabeth? Yeah, those are scissors. They're just um, uh, thread, thread scissors. But they don't have, they're not the safest because they don't have covers or anything to protect you. <laughs> so I'm very careful with them. Um, I don't know if I like the pattern here. What do you guys think? Chime in, let me know. Maybe I should not do, maybe just do green in the middle and not alternate. Elizabeth says, yeah, yeah, you like the pattern? Let 
just going to test this to see how far. So I could get one more bead. Safety, safety. <laughs> All about how well it works. Yes, Diana. <laughs> All right. And so with these these types of barrel crimps, um, you can use them with or without glue. It's your preference. Um, sometimes I use glue. Sometimes I don't. More black, less green. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just wasn't sold on all the alternating of the green. All right, let's see. We'll fix that right up. Okay. Sometimes the holes are not exactly the same, so you just got to try different ends. Cut your cord or your leather at an angle um, to make things fit. Does that look better? You can see the hole. I think that looks better than what I had before. All right. I just need one more black, black bead. And then we'll put the Now, because this is a man's necklace, I think I will glue just because men are a little bit rougher on things than women are. Okay. So, awesome. So, I'm going to slide that aside. I'm going to bring my mat over here. So, if I get glue, I don't get it on my board. This stuff out of the way. All right, so and I'm going to use the hypo cement. And don't worry about my threads. I'm going to cut those afterwards. And I did not bring. paper towel with me, so I'm going to have to improvise. All right. Okay, so this is the hypo cement glue. Um, you really don't even have to squeeze the tube. It will automatically just start coming out on its own. And what did I do with my, how did I lose a barrel crumb already? <laughs> Oh, well. well, I have one for the one side. That's all I need. Um, this glue is dried on the end, so it's not coming out. Okay. see it coming out yet. There it goes. So 
So I'm just going to put the tip inside the barrel. And you don't need a ton and you don't want it to ooze out the other side. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the end. And then I'm going to slide it on. And then I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers. We have these chain nose pliers at the store. They're, they're um, smaller than normal, so they're really comfortable in your hand um, and easy to use. So I'm just going to pinch just in the middle. So you don't want to pinch the end just in the middle. So do one side and then turn it over and do the other side to make sure that you've got it completely crimped. So now you can see it's flat in the middle, but the ends aren't. And I'm going to put the cover on my glue. <laughs> Bear with me a second so it doesn't leak all over. Okay. Um, and then I'll take care of the cords and use my thread zap. And we can give that a try now if you want, if you haven't seen how that works. So let me get back in, back in frame. All right. So with the thread zap, it comes with, you know, it's got this cover. You always want to store it with the cover so that, you know, you don't have it loose in a drawer and that button gets hit where things get hot. Um, I haven't used this in a while, so I'm not sure if my batteries any good. Well, it looks like it's getting hot. Okay. So I'm going to cut that's probably a little bit too long. That's better. So I'm not cutting it super short because um, you want to be able to create the ball with the the thread and melt it down. And this, you can only use this thread zap on synthetic cord. So you couldn't use it on leather. Um, you could use it on surfer cord. It works on that. So you get this good and hot and then you see it smoking and then it just melts it right down and then just take your finger and press it flat. Did you see that? All right, so I'm gonna do it again. So I'm holding it, getting it good and hot, and then I'm pressing it down, and then pressing where it's melted, and then you don't have to use any glue. So see? So that's one side done. And then, you know, before you glue, always pull the ends, make sure that they didn't come loose while you were working on other stuff. And tight. And then I'm going to get the thread zap hot again. And 
Um, we'll do the other side. And that's it. So we now have one one side done. Get this stuff out of the way so you can see it. All right. And then I will just finish up the other side. What do you think? Do you like it? <laughs> Don't set off the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, that would be awful. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's uh, that's the first half. I will um, go ahead and finish this up, and I'll post a picture once it's all done, and I'll let you guys see it. But if you make anything similar, post it in the group. Oh, thanks, Diana. And uh, we'd love to see what you guys do. And hopefully we'll see you this week uh, for the reveal. So uh, tomorrow's the first day, as I mentioned, and uh, but we'll be revealing something every day from Tuesday through Saturday. Saturday is the grand reveal with um, the semi-precious stones. So uh, stop in and see all the amazing stuff. Thanks for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed the video. Diana, thanks for your help. I appreciate it. <laughs> and I will see you guys soon. Take care, y'all.